Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on differential equations. This is video number 25, or it's the second in the subset of, uh, subset of videos on the separation of variables. Specifically in this video, I'm going to discuss the characteristic equation. And in fairness, I have discussed it in the past, but I'm just going to do it again anyway. Previous videos to this are as follows. In 20 tr through to 23, I discussed Laplace's equation, and in 24, I discussed separation of variables. So this is directly continue on from video 24 separation of variables so in video number 24 we saw we could have ordinary differential equations that might look something like this let's say x double prime over x is equal to a constant k squared and when we spoke about separation of variables we would have called k squared a separation constant and I say that of course we could we could leave it equal to k but as we'll see later on in this video we call it k squared because later on we will always take the square root of the separation constant. And for aesthetics, we like to take the square root of, like of uh, a squared number, so we just get back k. Anyway, so I'm going to call it k squared. Next, I also said that we can have plus or minus k. And I said that a plus k will give us a certain set of, uh, of um, solutions, and minus k will give us a certain set of solutions. They will, of course, be give us the same answers, but they will give us different looking answers. And when you're applying your boundary conditions, it might be easier to look, in, to look at exponential solutions versus uh, trigonometric solutions, cosines and sines. But we'll discuss all of that right now in a moment. So the first thing we need to do is note what the general solution to an equation like this is. Notice it is a second order equation. It's linear because the separation constant is, is linear. It's just k squared, it's not cos k or something like this. Um, and it's got constant coefficients because k is a constant. And it's an ordinary equation because it's only a function of x in this case. It's not a function of x, y, and z making it a partial. So the general solution to an equation of this form is the following. So you have capital X, a function of small x, is equal to e to the something times x outside of cos something times x plus sine something times x. Now I won't tell you what the, the somethings are. Let's call this I don't know, let's call this oh excuse me, let's call this alpha and let's call this beta here. The point we need to take from this is that our solutions are either going to be real exponentials or cosines and sines. But because using Euler's equation we can go from cos and sine to complex exponentials, we can say all the solutions of our differential equation will be exponentials, are the real or complex exponentials. Okay, next, let's just write down a general differential equation. Let's say it's going to be a times um, x double prime plus b times x prime plus c uh, times x is equal to zero. Let's say this is our equation. Like I said a moment ago, all our solutions will be either complex or real exponentials. So let's say, for example, our general solution, excuse me, I'll find my cursor. Let's say the solution is capital X, a function of small x, is equal to e to the, um, I don't know, let's call it e to the r times x, something like that. So we need to take the first derivative of it. So x prime is equal to r e to the r x, x double prime, x double prime, is equal to r squared e to the rx. Plug it into the equation and what we're going to get is when we just when we factor for e to the rx what you're going to get back is the following. You're going to get a r squared you're going to get b times r plus c and this is equal to zero. Now in order for this equation to be satisfied either e to the rx is equal to zero or the coefficients are equal to zero. Now, there's nothing wrong with e to the rx being zero, but if it is, then we have nothing and it's a trivial solution. So we say that this is non-zero, which means that this must be equal to zero. What we have gotten is a quadratic equation. So solving this quadratic equation is the same as solving this. And what we call this quadratic equation is we call it the characteristic equation. call it the characteristic equation. Now, more often than not, what we do is we give a coefficient of one 
on our second derivative. So we would write it in the following way. That is that that is conventional, and I suggest you go with that. Always have a coefficient of one on your 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 excuse me your square in this case, or it would be a coefficient of one on your second derivative up here. You would divide across by a. So where do we go from here? Just to write it up at the top again. Our characteristic, or excuse me, our differential equation has the following ge general solution. Our ordinary differential equation, a second order linear ordinary differential equation with constant coefficients, has a solution e to the alpha x outside of cos beta x plus sine beta x. And we have no idea what alpha or beta are yet. But we know that solving the differential equation is the same as solving our characteristic equation. So going back to it, let's say we had, let's say for example we had x double prime and we had minus k squared x, which is, which is what I had, actually I had plus k squared x, which is what I had in video number 24. So just to start off, I'm going to change this to a minus sign, you'll see later on why. So the solution is this as follows. In terms of, uh, in terms of the coefficients a, b and c, well, a is equal to 1, b is equal to 0, and c is equal to minus k squared. So to solve our quadratic equation, we use minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So it's going to be minus naught plus or minus the square root of naught squared minus 4 times 1 times minus k squared. Like this, excuse my, my lines, and 2 times 1. I'm sure you can see now why I chose my separation constant to be minus k squared because inside this square root we now have a real solution. So we have, we're just going to have plus or minus k is going to be the solution to this. Okay, plus or minus k. So we have a real solution. Um, now what we do then is this. If we look at our general solution, How we, how, we f how we fill this in is as follows. Alpha, in our general solution up here, alpha is equal to the real, is the real solution of the characteristic equation. And I'm sure you can see what's coming next. Beta is equal to the imaginary, the imaginary solution of the characteristic equation. So in this particular case, we had no imaginary solutions. All we got was a real solution. So where there isn't a solution, you put in zero. So this is gonna be zero times x for the imaginaries. So this is zero times x. And this up here is just gonna be plus or minus k times x. And now you can see why I took k squared because I'm after getting plus or minus k instead of plus or minus the square root of k. We know that the sine of naught is naught the cost of naught is one, and what we get is just a, a, an exponential solution. And I'm after realizing I should have put in just arbitrary constants here as well. So the solution to this would just be a times e to the plus or minus kx. Okay, and you'd have to take into account the, well, I'm, I'm not even gonna talk about that, but you'd have to take into account the fact that you have plus k and a minus k. Now, let's say, for example, we instead had the following differential equation, x double prime, and I had, so it's going to be plus k squared x is equal to zero. Now, if I do that, we know straight away that we're going to get imaginary solutions. So the imaginary solutions, that it's going to be zero squared minus the square root of zero minus four k squared over two. So in order to make the square root real, I need to multiply outside by iota and swap the signs inside. So this time the solution is gonna be plus or minus i times k. So this is of course a wholly complex solution. So I plug in plus or minus k, plus or minus k. We have no real solutions, zero. There's an x of course here in each one of these e to the naught is one, so this time we're just gonna get a cos plus or minus kx plus b sine plus or minus kx. So when we get just imaginary solutions to our characteristic equation, we only get back cos and sine. When we just get real solutions, we just get back 
uh, real exponentials. So what happens if, for some reason, we had a cost, or excuse me, a real and imaginary solutions? So let's say our, our equation looks something like this, x double prime plus bx prime plus k squared uh, x is equal to zero. Now, I'm sure you can see straight away what we're going to get back is something which has both real and imaginary solutions. It's going to be alpha plus or minus i times beta. And that's why we have alpha going in for the real solutions and beta going in for the imaginary solutions, plus or minus. Plus or minus is very important. So that's how we, that's how we solve our characteristic equation. Now, there is one more thing which I need to tell you, that in order to solve our equation, we need, of course, to take the, uh, the product of these exponentials and, and uh, cosines. So let's say we have e to the alpha x, say it's plus or minus like that, just, just, just to be most general. And we have a cos plus or minus kx plus b sine plus or minus kx. Now, in order to take the most generous solution, I'm going to give it capital X, a function of small x. The general solution is the, is, the, is the sum of two particular solutions. So earlier on, we got e to the kx. That might be a solution. So we have e to the x1 of x. Or, uh, sorry, we had e to the kx. I'm going to call it x1 of x. And we need to add to it a constant multiplied by some other solution, say e to the minus kx. It doesn't really matter. So in order to get the general solution to any equation, you need to get two particular solutions, and you need to multiply each of those by a constant and add them. All right? So how are we getting, how do we get particular solutions? Well, every time you change the sign up here, you get a particular solution. So you'll have a solution a plus, which is just where you keep the plus k, and a minus where you keep the minus k. And your, your overall solution, x general, will be, let's say, a constant c multiplied by a plus and a constant d multiplied by a minus, like this. Now, the interesting thing here is that you might think, well, hold a sec, now I'm going to be multiplying uh, four terms together because plus or minus, the, they, they give us loads of terms. You get two exponential terms, two cosine and two sine terms. But you don't because the cost of a, a, positive, a negative number is the same as the cost of a positive number. So it, it's never going to be plus or minus kx, it's just going to be plus kx. Now the sine, if you look at the sine, the sine of a minus number is minus the sine of a positive number. But this can be taken into account by the separate or by our constant b. So in actual fact, we don't ever need to look at plus or minus sine either. So all you have to do is look at plus or minus your exponential and multiply by a cos plus b sine. And finally, and this, this is the thing here, so if you have an equation which looks like the following x double prime uh, minus k squared x is equal to zero right you know you're going to get real solutions you can immediately write down the answer it's going to be x a function of x the general solution is going to be a constant a times e to the plus alpha x oh, plus kx and you're going to have another constant b times e to the minus kx there this is this is going to be x2, and this is going to be x1. Okay, that's when you have just real solutions. If you had just complex solutions, then, then your general solution would be your general solution would be a cos kx plus b sine kx. Because the plus or minus won't matter, because they the the plus cos it doesn't matter and the plus the the sorry the the minus sign can be taken account taken into account using b, and finally if you have both real and imaginary so solutions say you have alpha plus um we'll say alpha plus i times beta or plus or minus i times beta, well then you're going to get the following you're going to get e to the plus or minus alpha x, and so that'll be one solution. How do I write? Uh, how is the best way to write this? The general solution would be the following. X general is going to be the following. You're going to get a times e to the alpha x plus b times e to the minus alpha x. So that's the most general solution with exponentials. And you're going to get c cos plus b sine. B sine. 
I'll say it once more time. Note, of course, you don't have another term with the negative uh, solutions for cos and sine because they just don't matter. And that would be our general solution. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel. And you might also give me a comment on the box below.